O2 Inside Line, This Rose, Episode 5. Coming off the back of a big week in Verona, the lads have come back in great shape and we've started layering on a bit more of our structured play, structured defence and our structured attack. So well, we've been heavily unstructured getting that part of our game going. Um, we've flipped it a little bit this week and, and trying to get ourselves nice and organised. So the boys' reaction to Verona has been awesome. So they actually forged some really close bonds, it seemed like, particularly towards the end of the week. But the hard work that they put in, in the heat, you can have team building bonds, but I don't think there's any better bonds than working really hard next to each other, knowing that you've all gone through the same sort of pain. But they got through it, and then there's been a big bounce this week of a couple of days away and come in, and you can see the benefit of what a really tough week did on the field, but also some good laughs off it. It's been a long old journey together, isn't it? And it, it kind of, without saying it's the last one, because we never know, no. but it, it does have that sort of feel of like, uh, yeah, we kind of look at each other sometimes like, come on, <laughs> keep going, <laughs> dig, dig in. <laughs> We've got this, come yeah. on, mate. Level it, Len! What are you saying? You happy? It was weird because when I came back in in the summer, you yeah. weren't there, were you? No. So it felt weird in a way yeah. that I came back in and you weren't there because we'd been in it. We're in so it used to so have, yeah, we're so used to being being in it together. Yeah. So then when we saw each other that first day, it was a nice embrace, wasn't it? Was, it? And, uh, it was good to see you, mate. It's great to be back. Yeah. And we're having some fun. We are. <laughs> Tom played with Danny at age groups. I'd go watch Tom at 18s, 19s, and, and, and Danny was, was, was playing for England then. So I knew Danny before I knew him, do you know what I mean? I remember playing with Tom, and uh, I think it was at under 19s, he said, you know, I've got a, I've got a younger brother who plays nine, and he's, he's decent. And I was like, all right, mate, all right, cool, all right, whatever. Yeah, I'll be all right. And then I started playing the Quins, and then Lenny, you started playing for Leicester when you yeah. were about 12. Didn't you? How, <laughs> how old did you start playing? Um, I was young. And I remember looking, going, okay, this, this guy's actually, he's really good. And it was that Australia tour, wasn't it, where you, I played the first game, um, got, dro got dropped, which happens a lot. Lenny comes in, and I remember me and Wiggy were like, oh, okay, here we go, like, he's, he's good, let's see what happens. And then the first line out play, you've gone dummy rounded Drew Mitchell and scored and I'll never forget me and Wiggy looked at each other and Wiggy was in the stands and we were like oh no <laughs> <laughs> and I sat on my seat and I went right this is probably me for a while <laughs> for a while now whenever one of us came on for each other it has to be seamless and the team only benefits and there's no drop off in that yeah. full 80 minute performance in that Sure. You started the, the, the Grand Slam game in Paris. That did switch around in that Grand Slam game, which even I was surprised when he, when he tapped me on the shoulder and said, you're going to start this one. I remember the early try that Eddie had given me a bit of a nugget of information of lazy guards. Um, and I went through and scored uh, the greatest try that I've ever scored, my main, favourite memory in an England shirt. And then Lenny came on and steered the ship unbelievably close off that game remember you put that kick through Anthony Watson scored and for a lot of that time yeah uh, Benny would start and I would come on the last 20 minutes 25 minutes and I didn't mind it I, I generally didn't mind it. everyone was used to say oh do you not want to be starting go, of course you'd like to play more but my role in that team and it was working was Benny would do unbelievable stuff for 60 70 minutes so then I'd come on hopefully when they were all tired and do the easy bit and, and, and finish it off so the combination worked, um, it switched around a, a, a few times, but what this guy's done in an England shirt, what he gives to this team, then when you come on as a, as a replacement for him, you know you have to be at a high level because he's, he's produced a high level already, so the, the, the formula just kind of worked. Come on, man! I know, like, 
how good Danny is, so I know how what level I need to be at, and it's always been that way. I think you've got to embrace when you compete and you're bringing out the best in each other. And it's always been that. It's always been very respectfully, like, help each other, want the best of the team. Um, and you kind of need each other to try and be as good as you can be. So it's been great getting that back again. And actually, we were chatting yesterday about how, how long we've spent at this yeah. hotel, haven't we? Yeah. We were trying to work it out, weren't we? I reckon you're definitely over a couple of years. I don't know, but we, we worked it out. We were like, we've been here for, we've stayed at this hotel for over two years, we reckon. Yeah. So we have been here a while. <laughs> I think everybody always asks me, oh, you know, how's the rivalry with you and Youngzi? And there is, for me, there isn't one. It's a, it's a, it's a competitive, friendly thing that we share, that yeah. we happen to play in the same position. Without a doubt, this guy has made me a better player because I've had to raise my game. What he's done in an England shirt is incredible. Like the highest cap men's player of all time. It's, it's actually, it's ridiculous. Like it's, it's amazing and testament to, to the longevity that Young as he's had. And that's the benchmark. So for, for me and other nines, we've always gone, right, well, how do we get there? How do we do that? Um, and yeah, without sparing his blushes, this guy's a massive sort of, inspiration to, to loads of people, including me, to, to know you have to raise your game to be at Lenny's level. And if not, you're not going to get picked. And that's why he's been picked so many times, because he, he performs time after time. So it's been great to get back in with him, uh, to work with Wiggy as well. Obviously, we, yeah. we competed against for a long time. And obviously, you've got Jack and we've had Mitchin, two great young players that are obviously after our, after our shirts. So it's, it's a, it's, it's a good thing to have. You want to be up against the best, and this guy's the best. That's what it is, isn't it? That's what you get told all the time. Smile, don't smile. Too much teeth, less teeth, more teeth. Look left, no, look right. Point to the sky. Cover the rose, too much coverage. Don't cover the rose. Pull the rose. Celebrate a try, don't celebrate too much. Can we have a bit more of a grin, please? No, don't grin. Yeah, perfect. Cool, perfect. Here we are. Oh, here we go. He's a man of experience, ready. Put the T-Rex arms as they are. <laughs> Straight him out. Ready? Excellent, he's done. Well done, sir. Yes, man. Feet, man. Great feet. Two left, mate. Oh, yeah. oh. That's it. <laughs> Oh, my initial thoughts when being asked by Steve to come into this role were obviously pretty excited and privileged that he'd want me to try and come and help him. I'm a proud, proud Englishman, so when you get asked to try and help your country in any way, and particularly in this amazing role that, that I've got, then yeah, I jumped to the chance. My family were incredibly proud and uh, pleased for me, but also I've got a little boy, Freddie, who's rugby mad. Matilda, my oldest girl, is also very into your content, so they're waiting weekly, as I'm sure millions of you are, um, on the content that is created. They don't get to see too much of me at the minute, so they'll be very excited when I am actually on an episode of... The first week they did actually ask if I was there, so you'd obviously edited me out of everything. Um, I can't say I've watched any yet, but I'll, I'll watch this one back.
Hello, Matilda, Freddie, and Margot won't sit still for this. She's only four. She won't sit still and watch it, but um, she might shout that that's a daddy. So turn up first day pulling out big sight. I get to go to you boys. So this is me on the first day pulling out my copper mundial. So it just didn't suit me. The lads have always worn white boots. Uh, always look really good in them, obviously playing. But then, <laughs> but then I got onto my friend um, Anthony Watson. Oh, oh, he's he's got, got me a pair of these. So Anthony, thank you very much. Now I don't get to pick the team, but if there's any justice in this world, then. <laughs> Wiggy has an incredible understanding in this game, um, more so than, than the vast majority of coaches I have met, and he understands the, the tactical elements of the game, and a very clear picture of what he wants to get, and then has is really strong in getting that message across to the players. Really powerful in the way he delivers messages. And I think the players have such enormous respect for him. Partly because everything he is achieved. I think partly because they see his uh, understanding that he has in this game and they know they can get better working with him. And I think thirdly, because of how passionate he is about English rugby. I've never met a more competitive person, more competitive scrum half. Again, as someone, someone that you had to raise your standards against. Um, his his kicking game, I still would probably say one of the best in the world. Still now, and we're training, and he's just a coach. He's, his kicking game is still phenomenal. So when there was the three of us, and there was a few more around as well, you obviously you want to get in that nine shirt. But if you didn't get in the nine shirt, you had to be in that 20 or 21 shirt. And with Wiggy there who probably played a different sort of style to us in a yeah. different style of club team that offered something a little bit different. Um, you had to make sure that you, whatever you did really well, I think we all super strengths, you had to show it every week because if you didn't, Wiggy's, Wiggy's playing and whenever he played, he, pl he played well. So um, it was great to have that competition. Um, we, like, again, with Wiggy, we spent so much time together. Now the dynamic has changed a little yeah. bit, but it's still the same yeah. in a way because that's the way he is. Um, he was always going to be a coach, I think. He played like that, and he, I think he's taken it to like a duck to water, you know, better than me. No, yeah, of... he has. He, he's done a phenomenal job in terms of that transition, I think, and also it, it arrived sooner than, than he was planning on, you know, in terms of that mid-season suddenly having to hang up the boots and do what he did, but he did an amazing job. And as Danny said, like, so competitive, extremely dependable, like, wouldn't let you down. Uh, great kicking game, just very, very error-free. He was almost a coach before he was a coach very thorough demand, knew what he wanted and, and drove that. So he was, he was different to certainly how both me and Danny play. Um, but there was definitely elements of his game that, that I wanted to absorb like a sponge, especially in terms of that kick and control and that demand. And I think Wiggy would probably, probably just start to say it himself. Is, I think as a player, he was probably unapologetically him. Like, you know, this is what we're doing, this is how we're doing it. And I don't want to hear a bar of it. Like, and if you're offended by it, I'm not bothered. That, that's, you need to hear it. And I'd say as a coach now, you, you can't be like that. You have to have a little bit of, you know, if, 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 if he's coaching and speaking to myself and Danny, there's got to be dialogue, there's got to be, you know, back and forward. And of course you come to solutions. I think he's got an incredible skill set of being able to switch from both. So he's, he is that authoritative coach that you need and he gives us clear guidance of what he wants and what he expects. If you don't meet it, you'll know about it. He's the same as a player, but then he's still a clown at heart. He's still, he's still this northern joker that you can have a laugh with and he's been able to flick that switch. We play darts together or play a game of pool, we'll have a laugh with him and then it's like, right, get your box kick on the money. And you're like, okay, sorry, sorry, mate. I thought we were just having a laugh. But he's got that knack of being able to do that. I think the players have loved working with him already. Um, he's only going to get better and better. Um, and there's, I know the standards he set as a player, I think he's going to be exactly the same as a coach and he'll, he'll be a very good coach. He already is. I reckon if he saw me and you going out and he said, where are you up to? Oh, we're going for a beer. It would like, he'd yeah, like be yeah. so desperate he'd to come. come. But he'd come, but he'd be like having to like control himself. I get asked all the time about the relationships. Is it tough to coach players that you're close with or that you've played with? And I do see it as an advantage that I'm able to connect and know what they're, know what they're going through and hopefully know enough about them to get to help them quicker and in a way that suits them. And so JVP, obviously incredibly talented, successful player already. So a couple of players to 
look up to and learn from, then he's got the two most caps, England nines, in the same squad as him. So he's in a, a pretty privileged position that he gets to learn off them but compete with them because these guys have competed for a long, long time and he now gets to go and compete with them. So he's in a great position. I was a long, long time ago, a young scrum half who badgered all the players for advice. Um, and he's in that position now where he's so keen to learn, he's so eager, he's desperate to get better. And yeah, he's well placed to, to have people to help him do that. They're people that I grew up watching. I mean, I don't want to make DC sound old, but we were chatting yesterday and he said he made his debut in 2008 when I was seven. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I've grown up watching Lenny and DC play for England and Wiggy for my whole time when I was dreaming about playing for England and dreaming about being a rugby player. So to now be competing with them, learning off them is unbelievable. And yeah, I mean, I've been like so fortunate and so lucky to have people like that to work off Wiggy and Lenny at the club and DC whenever I've been in England camp. I mean, I don't think I could learn off three better people in the history of world rugby to help me and help push me and be better. Yeah, if I don't do all right out of it, there must be something wrong, I think, because they are, um, yeah, three of the sort of most impressive, impressive scrum halves that um, sort of in England rugby history. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm extremely fortunate to, to work with them and learn off them. I've just done a bit of research on a bit of a Premier League legend in Vincent Company because I've been given the task of interviewing him for our speaker series this week. So it's it's a big role. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous. I don't want to mess this up. Uh, I've been given this task by the boss himself, so I need to do it justice and do him justice because he's he's a legend. So I want to do it right. But hang on. I think I have maybe got a bit of a joke, which... He may like, he may not, but I'm, I'm going to roll with it. So watch this space. A couple of facts and stats for you, Vincent. Hopefully they're right. If not, blame Wikipedia, please. Uh, club career, started football as a schoolboy with Anderlecht. Three seasons there before moving to Hamburg in 2006. Yeah. <laughs> uh, summer 2008, signed for Man City, stayed for 11 years, eight as captain. In that time, this man is a winner, boys. Four Premier Leagues. Two FA Cups, four League Cups, two Community Shields. Missing anything? Yeah, a couple of Belgian leagues as well. Belgian yeah. leagues, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, internationally, debuted at 17, played 89 times for Belgium, seven years as captain, third at the World Cup in 2018. So, lads, I think you'll agree we're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> I was blown away by how impressive he spoke, the kind of bloke that he is, the standards that he's setting, to do it as a player, but then to go into coaching and, and blow away the championship when no one thought they could do it in one of his first seasons as a, as a manager is incredible. Um, and he gave us this unbelievable presentation, didn't he, on what he expects of his players. And it was a quiet room. Everyone was listening in. And I thought he spoke, one of the best speakers I've ever, I've ever heard from. I thought he was great. I, I'm often speaking to my own players and I think for myself as well it's something that I really wanted to do, get the opportunity to not just speak to you, share with you, but also exchange with your coaching staff and, and all the people surrounding um, what is going to be hopefully for you guys a special journey. could really understand and relate to what you're saying and some of the bits that he spoke about, consistency and hard work essentially other people fall, fall to the side and I suppose to do what we've done for that long, that consistency and hard work, you know, people have come and they've and they've gone, um, and here we are. I still 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 sat here. We've got a little token of our appreciation to shirt. Just, just to say thank you very much for coming here. Uh, yeah, we've got some Burnley fans now. We might put some money on for next year. <laughs> Well, like my wife is English, my children are English, so 
this shirt will uh, will have its place at home. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.